Hi there, my name is Pablo Requena and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to um, make one of these little jigs which is used to make the holes in the bridge for your guitar. Now before we go into the video I just want to remind you that I have a, a guitar making course that is available online and I just want to uh, just remind you to uh, go in the website and have a look at it to see if it's something that it will help you to build your next guitar or to, to build your very first guitar. So I will leave in the description on this video, I will leave, uh, leave a link to the website which is www.onlineguitarmakingcourse.com Right, so back to the subject of this video. Basically, this is a little jig that I came up with years ago and I've used it many, many times to build the guitars that I make. Let me just get one bridge that I've got over here so that I can show you and it's very very useful to be able to drill the holes um, for the tie block in, in your bridge. Now a few years ago I already did a video about how to do this job basically how to drill the holes in the bridge using this uh, type of jig I don't know if it was this one in particular, I've got a few. So you can refer back to that video and you will see how to use this jig there. But the purpose of this video is to make another one because uh, a couple of reasons. One is because some of my old students have contacted me saying, hey, why can't I get one of these? It's really difficult uh, to, to commission an engineer company to, to make one of these jigs. And I can see why it was hard for me as well to find somebody willing to do this because when you go into a company and you ask them to make a one-off um, jig like this made of metal, usually they don't want to know because it's not financially viable unless you go and order a huge amount of these uh, little jigs and you only need one and, you know, it's just hard. But it's possible to make one out of wood which it's our element and we should be able to do refine uh, things with wood and it will do exactly the same job and it will work very well. In fact, I have one of these here that I did some time ago and this is made of, oh, I, I'm not really sure what wood it is really, uh, it's just something that I had around the workshop and I used it because it's very tough and it worked very well. So what we're going to do is to pay a bit of attention to, to this one which is now made of wood and this is now something that you can do in your own workshop. If you were able to have one made with metal that's great because it's going to be much more durable obviously and you'll be able to make as many guitars as you wish out of it. If that's the way you want to go and you know somebody who can do this for you or you have the equipment to do the work with the metal that you need to do then if you go into my Facebook page I will also leave a description in, in, in the video I have uh, a sketch with dimensions and some basic drawings that you can use to get the dimensions to do a jig like this but to be able to do this one what we're going to do is to uh, have a look at what materials can we use I have prepared a couple of things before this video to make sure that this video is not going to be too long and basically what I have is something that I have found around the workshop again I'm not really sure exactly the type of timber that this is it's pretty tough it's not ebony it's not rosewood uh, but you know anything that you find in the workshop that is like rosewood or ebony will work really well so what I've done here, I don't know if you can see in the video, hopefully you can, is that this is a lot longer than we need. Uh, the final jig is going to be 80 millimeters long, but this is, I'm not sure, it's about 180 millimeters long. Look, this, this ruler is 150 and we've got more, so I think it's about 180 or even 200. Something along those lines could be good. You can see that what we have here is one strip stuck into a plate. Now the strip, I've made it 8 millimeters by 8 millimeters, and the strip here, this one is 6 millimeters, and this is far wider than it needs to be at the moment 
just for you to have an idea this is about 45 44 45 millimeters it's a bit longer than it needs to be like i said and you'll see at the moment what we do uh, to get it to the right dimension and you can see that they are not completely flush you know obviously when you glue things together and you clamp them they tend to move around a little bit so it's better if it moves towards the inside so that you have a little bit of an edge there because we can trim this back very easily you'll see that in a minute but it's better than having this strip sliding out to the outside because then you have to trim this strip which i would rather not i'd rather trim the the base plate now the other thing to take into account is that i've looked for a piece of wood that is quarter on and that is because i want the grain in this jig to run along this way basically perpendicular to the plate the reason for that is because i'm going to be drilling from this side down and if the grain is completely horizontal then it means that the drill is gonna or the drill bit is gonna drill much more accurately if the grain is the other way around what will happen is that as you drill through the drill will have a tendency to want to follow the grain and this is pretty tough so it can actually force the drill bit sideways a little bit so it will be a little bit more accurate if the grain runs horizontal or perpendicular to the base plate right so the next thing to do is to mark in this section here in the added block this is just being glued together the two of them and i've done it in advance because you know the glue takes 20 minutes half an hour to dry thoroughly and you know it's not going to work in this video if i just do it in front of you you can work this out very easily um, so i'm assuming i'm hoping that you are able to build one of these without me having to explain too much how I've done it and uh, it's fairly simple basically it's just a 8 by 8 millimeter strip stuck into a plate which is 6 millimeter thick and for about 45 millimeters wide and just glue it together you know it's very very easy very simple so what we're going to do now is that we need to lay out the position of the holes that we're going to be drilling so the first thing to do is i'm going to switch on this light to see if we can see better it's, a, it's rather convenient that we can see this glue line because then we can see the the two pieces uh, separately quite well and what i want to do is to have one line running down the middle of the block where i'm going to be doing the drilling so because it's quite narrow it's only eight millimeters wide i can do this by eye but it's a good idea to check with your caliper to make sure that it's actually in the right place and it's very 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 slightly off the center so all, I'm, all I need to do is to just clean this line a little bit actually I'm going to make another line here yeah this one is a bit more like it and what i'm going to do again using my finger as a as a guide i'm going to run this line all the way along here like that so that is where i'm going to be drilling but i want to make it a little bit more accurate than that so i'm going to get a marking gauge and i'm going to make the line with a marking gauge and you could do it just with a pencil but with the marking gauge what happen is that what we're going to make a scratch into here and that scratch is going to actually encourage the drill bit to go in the right place let me do this in here i'll put it in the bias and This timber is pretty tough, so I'm having to run 
the marking gauge up and down quite a bit to get a decent groove in here which now I can see and let me see if I run the pencil into here no nah, it's not gonna help okay it doesn't matter um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a little bit of tape onto I've got the groove there which is gonna do the job that I wanted in terms of helping to locate the the drill bit but I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape because that's going to help me to be able to see what I'm actually doing here. So I'm just going to get rid of this excess and I'm going to run this again over here. And we can see that line in there very well. But it's nice and thin, so it's just going to help me to make a very accurate um, position there. Now, the normal um, the normal spacing that I have for the holes in the bridge in my guitars is 11.5 millimeters in between centers. This one I'm going to do is slightly different for the project that I'm, that I'm doing this for, and I'm going to. Um, I'm going to have the holes 11 millimeters in between centers. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get, I'm going to get my scalpel and I'm going to use a ruler and I'm not going to start too close to the end but I'm going to come in about 25-30 uh, millimeters in and what I want to do is to, as accurately as possible, we are going to mark 11 millimeters there Then I'm going to move the ruler along to be able to mark this a little bit more easily. Then 11 millimeters here. Eleven millimeters. So if you have good eyesight, then you will be able to do this just with a normal ruler. If not, you might be able to get a magnifying um, set of glasses or something to help you with this. Eleven millimeters. So I've got how many of them? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This one is a little shy here, so I'm just going to make it a little bit stronger to make sure that I can see it well. So I got this one. Yeah, I can see it here. There, I'm just going to check. Yeah, it's that one. Now I'm going to use a square and I'm going to mark them a little bit more clearly so I'm just going to put the scalpel in the little mark that I did and then just bring the square to the scalpel and then just I'm just going to mark it a few times and then you can see that's quite clear and quite easy to see so same here One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, that's what we want. So now we have the position of each of the holes, and before we take this to the to the drill, what I'm going to do is that with a bradle, um, with a sharp point, I can make very carefully just a little uh, little hole here, which is going to help the drill bit go in the right place
Great. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to come over to my pillar drill and what I have done here is to get a 1.5 millimeter drill drill bit and actually this one is too small to be able to be uh, directly fitted into this chuck because this is quite a big quite a, quite a big drill so um, you can get very easily this kind of adapters which is like a little um, chuck that then you can actually put in the drill you can get this online very easily I'm not really sure where I bought this one because I got it so long so long ago but they're very easy to find um, otherwise you can also use a smaller pitot drill which it will have a smaller range for the chuck and it will be able to hold into a 1.5 millimeter uh, drill bit I like this drill because it's very precise and very strong so it will do a very good job for me right so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a block uh, it doesn't matter really how big it is what you want is for it to be square all sides which it is and the one thing that you want is to make sure that it's just a little bit wider than the wood that you have here so that you can dress this into this corner quite easily because we're going to be drilling in this face so it needs to be kind of well um, supported and straight up so we're going to use this block here and we're not going to do the drilling completely freehand what we're going to do is that I'm going to clamp this block into right I need to bring this bed a little bit higher there to be able to get this clamp under here like that so if I clamp it well it's gonna hold it but it's not in the right place so what I'm going to do is that I just release the clamp a little bit and then I'm gonna bring my wood into here and then all I need to do is to bring everything along until I can see that I will be drilling in the right place which that to me looks to be in the right place so what I'm going to do is carefully I'm going to tighten this clamp up like that so that this is all solid and it doesn't move and then I'm gonna check that it's still in the right place and yes I'm happy with that so what we're gonna do is that because we've got this little dimples already done into the wood even if we were slightly out the drill bit is gonna go to the right hole so it's gonna do the job really nicely so let's do it Okay, so I've got my holes here and they all have come out really nicely, all of them very nicely in line and I'm going to check with the caliper in a minute but just by eye the they all look like they are in the right place as well. So we're going to go back to the other bench and um, so yes what I'm going to do is with my caliper yes this is scored out very nicely 
So now what we're going to do is that this um, now is, a, is too long and we needed it too long like this because we wanted to be able to work with it much more easily than if we just cut a small piece it's just harder to, to work things out. So what we're going to do now is to determine the length as well as to determine how much we're going to remove from, from this plate. So let's mark the length first. So I'm going to bring it here into my vise. And what I'm going to do is first I'm going to find the center of the, the middle gap of all these holes here. So because it's 11 millimeters in between centers, then the center of that is going to be 5.5 millimeters. So it's very easy just by eye to place your pencil in between these two millimeter lines and do a small little pencil mark there. And then with the pencil I can just mark it like that. Right, so that's the center and because I want the whole thing to be 40 millimeters in length and I want all the holes to be kind of central to the block that's why I wanted to have the center line because then now all I need to do is to bring my ruler here, bring 40 millimeters to the line and then make a little mark here another little mark in there and then I just bring them across and the same in here like that um, I'm actually going to mark them with the scalpel because it's going to help me to get this done a bit more accurately so I'm going to mark it across here and in here because now I can make this mark bring it to this side and this side and now I can also bring them across here Ooh, this is moved a bit now that's it there we are and now I can do this with the pencil because this now doesn't need to be super accurate but I want to have a nice sharp point in here I'm going to bring this line down this block and then across here as well so with this adjustable square I cannot see it very well so because a dark line into into this dark wood is just not gonna work so what I'm going to do is to put a little bit of masking tape in here and a little bit of masking tape in here and we're going to try again Right, and now I'm going to use this type of square to bring this out and to bring this out because now I can use my cutting block And I can 
use this saw and we can cut this on the line just to trim it for length Pretty tough. Okay, this saw is actually refusing to cut this very easily. So I don't know what is this wood, but honestly, it's even tougher than ebony and it's kind of cutting off the line because it's so tough so we're going to change the approach and we're going to cut it in the bandsaw and it will do the job really easily as well and really well so we're going to bring it across here like so and i'm going to switch it on there so you might want to turn the volume down on the video now because this is a bit noisy so um, yeah, let's do it. There we are. And then this other end, we're actually going to do it by hand because I never trust this how a square is going to go. So let's do it. Okay, so we have the length over here, now we want to see how wide to do this. Usually the bridge that I do is 28 millimeters uh, in width and let me see how wide is this jig. Yes, 28. So we're going to do this 28 as well and the idea is that when you place the bridge here it will clamp into here nicely but this sometimes can be a bit in the way so it, it will be a good idea if this width is a little bit less than the width of the bridge. This is 28 millimeters that's what I do if you do a different dimension then um, you should change it for whatever you, you do. So I'm going to put a little bit of tape in here as well and I'm going to mark 28 and and that's my cutting line. So let's go back to the bandsaw. And we can actually use the fence for this job here. And this wood is so tough, I don't know if I'm gonna cut super straight. So if it doesn't, then I will adjust, take the fence off and do it by hand, uh, freehand. But I think let's try first.
Okay, so let's go back to the bench. And now all we need to do is to remove all these pieces of masking tape. And all we need to do is to just do a little bit of tidying up. So with a block plane, we can use a little bit of plywood, no, with this one, and just trim this side a little bit until it's flush. Right, let's do it from this side. That's it until all of this is flush here and then we just kind of do a couple of passes here to remove you can hear by the sound of the plane as it cuts that this is pretty tough but with a good uh, sharp plane you'll be able to to cut it quite nicely and then we could do a little bit of sanding on the ends but actually I'm gonna leave them like that because is pretty good and it's okay as like that so basically this is um, the jig it's very simple to make as you can see and okay it's not made of metal but this thing by so um, tough that you will be able to drill and to use this jig many many times before you you get this to be a little bit inaccurate and then you might think that you have to start thinking about making another one but you know i bet you can make many many guitars with this one before you need to replace it so you can see this is very simple to do you could make this with any kind of uh, little scraps of wood that you might have hanging around your workshop and the other reason why i wanted to do this jig is because this is also what I use to be able to do a conversion from six holes to 12 holes uh, on a guitar. So basically what that means is that if you can see this bridge, let me just get something to point with. I have 12 holes here, two holes for each string. And sometimes I am in a situation in which I have to drill another set of holes in a guitar that it's already you know a guitar that is constructed uh, uh, been being used but originally had only six holes and for different reasons sometimes it's convenient to be able to have another hole to string it up in using that method so it's not so easy to drill another set of holes in a bridge on a guitar that is already been built but using this jig is not so complicated but that will be the subject for another video and stay tuned because I will be doing this video, well, I'm not sure when, but hopefully soon. And I will show how you can use this jig to make a conversion from 6 to 12 holes in a guitar that is already constructed. And therefore the bridge is fixed into the soundboard. But if what you want to do is just to build the bridge before you're going to glue it into the guitar, obviously. And you want to know how to make the holes. There's already a video in my channel that I did a few years ago. If you go back and look for it, you'll find it very easily. It's there and you'll be able to how to use this jig to make the holes. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy and that is helpful and until the next one.